Absolutely. Thank you guys for being here today. Obviously, appreciate y'all showing interest in the University of Memphis football program. Obviously, exciting times and a lot of uh, momentum coming off of last season, going into recruiting and now heading into spring football. It's been really great last few months getting the guys back on campus, a lot of new faces as we've discussed, and a lot of returning players that are, are excited, looking forward to what the 2024 season's all about. But the guys have come back to work in, in mid-January and working hard, a lot of running around in t-shirt and shorts, but excited to get them out for spring football next Tuesday. Uh, they've done a tremendous job on the classroom, uh, in the classroom and on the field with everything we've asked them so far. Uh, but real football starts next week, and that's what we're excited about. But couldn't be more pleased with the effort and the mindset and the approach of all these guys. Uh, it's been fun, you know, obviously retaining so many great players and great coaches and then also adding some new faces to the fold. But uh, really, really exciting times right now amongst our football program and, and can't wait for next week. Ryan, I'm, I'm not going to start falling on those huge. For the last few years, we were always building up to this 12-team playoff and how the smaller Power 6 type schools wanted an opportunity. Well, now it's here, and if you listen to the scuttlebutt around the country, one of the teams that they're talking about is this program. How excited are you about not only that to be in the conversation, but to have that big carry at the end of a season where you can play for the national title? Yeah, let's start with that. I think going to the 12-team playoff is, is obviously an exciting thing for our program um, because what it means for perhaps possibly our conference winner, that ability to go to that. Um, we're going to take everything one game at a time, as you guys know, and that's not coach speak, but that mentality, that, that mindset of, hey, there's a chance to go to the big dance. And so I think what it does is eliminates this P4 mindset and approach. And we use it in recruiting all the time. I'll, I'll use a school say, okay, who has a better chance of winning this school here in this location, winning their conference, or Memphis? Oh, of course you guys do. Okay, well, great. You say you want to play big-time football. This is that opportunity. So it's another way to sell our program, what we're all about. Um, I, I love the fact there's high expectations. I, I absolutely do. And, and, and that's great. That's credit to – the coaches and the players that have been part of this program, they have built this place to what it is now. And the expectations are great, but you know, we talk about playoffs, we talk about championships briefly, but the reality of it, it's one day at a mind approach. And you guys know, you guys heard me talk about putting the blindfolds on, right? Putting the blinders on and just going and freaking go to work every single day. And I tell our team, you know, even at a team meeting last week, you know, we're gonna work our tails off and then we're gonna look up in December and, and see where the, the cards may lay. And um, that, that's great. I'm glad people are talking about it, but it's just credit to what's happened in the past and what we've been able to build, but it doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh, we have not even reached our goal of you know, winning a conference championship, and that's, that's got to be the main goal. Um, but let's try to improve day in and day out and see what happens. Coach, speaking of taking back there on the mic, you're coming up a 10-1 season, you win the Liberty Bowl against the Power 5 team. you got the stadium there that looks, everything's ready to go um, as far as when you walk into the door now with recruits, and when you come in and look at your team, you see what do you see when you look at them, and what do you see? What do you see out of the recruits when you go talk? To them? Yeah, well, let's start with this current team. Um, you can always tell a lot about an 18 to 23 year old about their eyes, and I, and I tell our staff, I've I've walked into team meetings, I'm like, man, they're not bought in. This is not what we want. And there's other times I walk in, I'm like. Man, these guys' eyes are great. They're bright-eyed. They're sitting up. They're paying attention. They're taking notes. And that's what I've seen so far with this team. Now, we got a long ways to go before we kick the football off uh, the season opener at the end of August. But that's what's been so unique and so much fun about this group is, you know, I've used the mantra all in. And, uh, Greg, I mentioned that this morning on the radio. It's like, man, our, our, I think the buy-in for this entire program, whether it's Charles Clark, the deputy head coach, the grad assistant, the janitor, the third string nose guard, it seems like, man, there's like 98% bought in to being all in. And that to me is as exciting as anything. And I think, yeah, there's always that nice thing, that care that may be. But I, I think guys are embracing the work, the day to day, right? We, we show up for a, a 6 a.m. workout and, you know, 100% of the people, of the 200 people in this organization are there at 530. Let's work. That's wonderful. That, that gives you hope. That speaks to the culture, the volume that all these other people have built. And then with recruiting, it is, it's great because I think there's a lot of momentum. I think you guys saw this, the class we were able to put together, whether it's transfers, JUCO, high school signings. I think a lot of people are really excited about the Memphis brand, our university, our city, and we have so much to sell. Let's start with the stadium. We push it. We say, hey, look what's going on here. Uh, some improvements that are going to occur on South Campus that we're going to continue to sell. We push more than anybody, right? Like, 
the seventh in the country in internship opportunities, all the wonderful things here at the university, Jarvis. Uh, you know, I, I, I tell them about your story, right? Here's Jarvis Greer, one of the best Memphis Tigers of all time. Uh, you know, we can use that in recruiting. But I think the momentum, right, the 10-win season, all those things, and the expectations moving forward, it's exciting. Uh, and I'd, I like to think that when we go into these homes, people know, hey, Memphis football, it's to be reckoned with. Let's talk about all the other things this place has to offer. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. It obviously makes our job easier. But you know what makes this whole thing go is the guys in the locker room. I and mean, we got 120 guys in the locker room that have been phenomenal, that have bought in, they're willing to work. And, and guess what? When recruits come and watch spring practice, man, there's an infectious energy. There's something about this place. And, and look, we just want to continue to ride that momentum. But it, it doesn't matter unless you win football games and, and keep putting in the work. Brian, so that's the one of, if not the most experienced QB in the conference. Um, just how exciting is that knowing that you have that in, in your locker room? Yeah, uh, uh, Seth just turned 21 two days ago, so he is still a, um, a, a young man. I, I made the joke this morning that I think Brady White was 36 by the time he got done playing, and his grandkids I'm recruiting right now uh, to come play here. But no, Seth is uh, right, a, a true four-year starting quarterback, um, and in my opinion, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country, not just this conference and experience. Um, but that's huge, right? We know the trigger man is almost everything in college football. We're still going to play great defense, be sound on special teams, run the football. Um, but what Seth has meant to this program has been huge. And it's unique, Frank. You know, even prior to you getting here, I think back about, man, we, we, we pushed the chips in on a 17-year-old quarterback and started him as a true freshman. We were the only team in the entire country that started a true freshman at quarterback that year. And we, we took our bumps. And there were some questions, hey, man, is – you know, sort of, uh, we, they went eight and three that first year, and then uh, it's a little bit rocky. We knew there's going to be some things that occur. It's like starting a rookie quarterback in the NFL. You know, it's not always going to look perfect, but you, you buy in, and, and people at one point, hey, are, are you going to sub sub as Seth the quarterback? Man, we just stick with him. He's one of those young men that, that, that we stuck by and believed in, and, and, and vice versa. He's stuck with us and believed in us, and I think we were able to see, hey, this is what happens when you, you develop and you learn and you continue to push and grow and. You know, it resulted in a 10 win season, but guess what? That's not going to, that result necessarily isn't going to be good enough. We got to be better. And he understands that. And it's, it's obviously very exciting to have him continue to be a part of this program and lead us. He was one of several kind of prominent guys on this team who decided to stay. Was the carrot of, hey, like, we won 10 games. Like, look at what we could be this year if you stay. Like, and then them staying, how did that change things just around the building and just for other guys? Yeah, Mark, I think I've always said this. One, that, yes, let's, I think the, the expectations and what people are excited for for next year certainly played into it, I think, guys. And it's infectious. Well, Rock Taylor says I'm saying, well, that's, that, that helps Seth make his decision, right? And we always go back it's to the relationships. It's no different, right? We've had coaches that have had opportunities to maybe go to a, quote, unquote, bigger school, a different logo, and they're like, man, th what we're doing here, th 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 what we have here, the way we run things, the culture, the team, the players, our day-to-day, -day, um, every day is not going to be perfect, and you guys have heard me say that multiple times. Every day will not be perfect in this building, but if we come in and buy in, it's kind of a joy to work and, and put it in and, and, and grind it out. I think about a guy like Charles Clark, who's you know my fifth year now here at Memphis, right? You one of my very first hires, and a guy like that that is stuck by, and he's had opportunities to leave every year to make more money, almost double his hire. He's like, you know what, man, let's do this thing and push and. You know, those are the type of, you got players, Seth Hennigan's, the Rock Taylors, the Kobe Drakes, uh, Cremonte Hamilton, who left, who came back here, who's had opportunities to leave again because these guys can transfer whenever they want. Now I'm bought in. Greg Rubin, right, could have gone a lot of places. I, I'm going to stick to this. And that, to me, is great. And I think it speaks volumes, again, about the, the type of men we have in this program, men and women, uh, the 200 people that come to work every day that are pushing in the right direction. I think that's harder and harder to find in college football. You know, I'll talk to other head coaches, and they're like, well, Man, I hate half my locker room. I can't wait to bring in my players. Well, they're always going to be our players and, and our, my staff. We don't always get along and there's ego. I, I don't see that. And I said if there's ever the biggest issue, maybe it's me and let me continue to work on myself. But um, that's been fun. And then, you know, how exciting is that to move forward is, man, a guy like Seth Hennigan had opportunities to go places. So Rock Taylor, they want to be here. They, they want to be a part of it. Chandler Barton, they want to be a part of this success. Um, they're the ones that help build this culture day in and day out. And more than anything, Mark, you know, the, the coaches use the buzzword culture all the time. What the hell is it? It's our players, right? How they act, how are they behaving in society? What are they doing with their, their GPA? And then they're the ones that set the standard. 
they're the ones that say, okay, hey, I can sit here and say, hey, our, 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 the standard is to go win a championship. No, what is it every single day that we show up? What are the standards you guys are demanding of each other? Um, the guy's two minutes late for study hall. What do you guys want to do? Oh, coach, our, our linebacker core will handle it, right? Our, our uh, running back's not doing what No, let us handle because we're going to – we know what the expectations are, standards are for ourselves. And when it starts doing that, you're like, man, we got a chance. And that's what's so special about this group, I think. Ryan, how much – Kind of off that, when you look at the, um, you look at Seth and you look at around college football, especially a group of five teams, a lot of them are bringing in five-star quarterbacks, guys who went somewhere else, didn't play, and transferred, and now people are excited about looking at Boyden State and Tulane, obviously, just two, two examples. How do you kind of contrast looking at that versus what we have here with Seth and a guy who's been in the program for this year? Yeah, look, there's a lot of talented players out there, right? I mean, a lot of talented quarterbacks. I believe Tulane brought in a five-star from Oregon, and boys, you talk about these programs that are bringing in these, you know, big name guys, especially high star recruited guys, I, I take a lot more pride in saying, man, we helped develop this guy. I think you know Seth had one other offer out of high school, and you know he's kind of grown in this. But I also think there's a lot of merit, not just in the experience of playing here, but he understands how we do things on a day to day, and that goes back to that word culture. He understands the standards. You know, Seth Hennigan's been over to my house. Like we have that that relationship, the relationship with Cramsey. Those things you can't replicate. It doesn't matter how talented they are or what their skill set looks like for a guy that's been a part of it, that bleeds blue, that loves this community. Man, that makes a huge difference. And I promise you, you may say, well, yeah, this guy at such and such school may have this ability. And he was a, that's great. But man, when guys have been in the trenches and got it, I think that makes a big difference in trying to find ways to win football games. You're just talking about selling the program. You've done a great job in doing so and keeping people here that could go other places. But how much more of a, of a challenge is it now, Ryan? in the NIL world, especially if you go into somebody's household and you can look in the kid's eyes like you talked about looking in the meeting and you can tell it's only about the money. How hard is it now? Sure, there, that is, NIL is part of what we're dealing with in college football. And whether it's in roster retention or recruiting, um, it's, it, let, look, we can't bury our head in the sand and say it's not part of it. It really is. And, you know, the majority of the guys we're going to recruit, they're probably not the type of young man if that's the very first question. If the very first question is how much you got to pay me, that's not probably a young man we want in part of our, our program. We want the guys that understand that the university, our program, has things that we can offer other than NIL. We still have NIL opportunities uh, because of this great city, because of our great support boosters and people that want to give back to this football program that understand what it is. Uh, especially so much of ours, it's charity-based, which is a great thing here with you know the 901 fund and other things we're able to do. Um, but it, it does create unique challenges because that was an even conversation piece three years ago. And so now you do go sit in a living room or you pick up the phone and call the kid and, and, and it inevitably will come up at some point. And you try to have that dialogue the best you can and understand it's this part of college football. Uh, the good news is we're not shying away from it. We know it's here. Um, we got people working tirelessly to make sure that we are able to provide um, our student athletes with the best we can um, in order for them to um, feel like this is a, a contribution for, or for being a student athlete and part of our football program. And, and credit to the administration, all those people continue to support us in the right way. And, and we're grateful for all those people that continue to help. But it, it's a, there's conversations that are occurring that, you know, had we had this at the, my first press conference in the defensive team room five years ago, just over five years ago, th this wasn't even, I mean, we would never have thought about it. Um, but it's, it's the avenue we're going down. Um, we've talked about the things that are occurring this morning, even on the radio. Yeah, you know, I, I listened to what Nick Saban said. I listened to some of these people. Um, I don't want to get on the political side of things and go down that rabbit hole with those conversations, but it's where we are, and I, and I try to be upfront on it and understand that and, and see where we can do it, but we always want to be advantageous with things rather than shying away from them. Ryan, you, you talk about setting the standard, and obviously a 10-win season, a Liberty Bowl win is great. Well, just a couple of days ago, three of your former players signed lucrative NFL deals after being – already pretty good NFL players. What does that spotlight do when, you know, because that, that's always the big picture. That's where I think these guys want to go. How much does that help you when Tony and Antonio and, and those guys those get those kind of deals where you can say, you know, get with the Memphis? First and foremost, it goes back to Greg's question. I'm going to be calling them up, asking them for some NIL money. Like, hey, I want to name you. Would you like the uh, Bryce Huff Student Academic Center? Cool. I'm coming to visit you in Philadelphia. So if, if after this press conference, I'm going up to Philadelphia, shaking hands with him and Jake Elliott, trying to get some of that change, uh, which credit to them, kudos to them, man, and so well-deserved. 
And I think what Mike is so unique is the way they did it, right? Tony Pollard, a homegrown kid here, uh, is he a safety? Is he a kick returner? Is he a running back? And then goes and has success, and then gets franchised. And for a running back to be able to get that, really that second deal after being franchised, and, and to come home to our, our home state, right, a three-year contract, $24 million, I can't wait for him to take me out to dinner when he comes back to town, right? We'll probably end up at Pollard's Barbecue, which is great. <laughs> I, I've, I've eaten too much of that, as you guys can tell, this offseason, which is wonderful, right? Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson started six or seven games here at the University of Memphis. We weren't even sure if he, you know, he got to play because Patrick Taylor broke his foot. He was an overweight wide receiver that came here that probably should have registered as a, a true junior, played, and now he's getting another opportunity in a multi-year deal with the Patriots, right? A running back that's proven, and I think, like, talking to him, we were texting this morning, like, he knows he's got more to prove, but he's excited to continue to show what he's capable of, which is great, and hopefully be used in a different system. And then, I mean, Bryce Huff, what a story, right? Three years, $51 million plus. And then you look at Bryce Huff's story, right? He, he, he was not a – nobody put on the film and said, man, Bryce Huff dominated Memphis. I think he may have been a uh, third-team all-conference, the end, outside backer. Um, you know, if you ask the coaches, none of us would say that guy. And then to sign the highest undrafted free agent non-quarterback contract in the history of the NFL. Oh, so, I mean, great for him. And he's the type of young man that just worked. And he's not one of those that was a five-star coming out that had a bunch of – he just kind of every day put in that, no different than the way he was here. And it's worked for him in the NFL, and, and credit to him. I mean, if he just plays three more years of football in the NFL, what a success story. And so that's kind of the, the deal. And it, it helps us in recruiting. Uh, you, I was hitting that retweet button as quick as I could. As soon as Adam Schefter, retweet, you know. And then, and then the next question was, hey, come, come, when are you coming back and visiting? But, no, these um, – it's, it's great. It's great for the program. It's great for um, those young men. And, and you get f uh, the, the, the mindset of, man, these former Tigers are out there having success. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to watch. And it, it's tremendous for everything we're trying to accomplish here. Along those four, Reg, Reg, Reggie was on your staff previously. Lou was not. Um, I'm curious how those, especially with Lou, how it all came together and what it means to have guys who used to play here now on your staff. Yeah, so let's go with this. First off, Lou Esposito and Reggie Howard are phenomenal football coaches, right? Like, it's cool that they're Tigers, but phenomenal football coaches. So I got to meet Lou when I first got here, right? He's a former Tiger that wanted to come back. And same with Reggie. So those were two guys I met almost nine years ago. And you, you keep in contact. You get to see – I mean, Lou Esposito left a defense coordinator job to come here because his thoughts here. Reggie Howard was coaching in the NFL, right? Had worked with Pryor, was coaching in the NFL. Um, obviously, had a tremendous career here. And then, you know, seven-year career in the NFL. And, I told him this morning, I said, you're never going to get sick of me talking about you picking off Tom Brady in the Super Bowl because I'm going to say it all the darn time. Um, but tremendous coaches, tremendous men, and then to be able to bring them back home. And, like, when, you, when I got to talk to them and, and, and spend time, and w that opportunity came, I mean, you could just hear it in their voices. And every coach that's going to come to the university, everybody in this program is going to work. But, man, maybe take a little bit more pride when you've worn that Memphis across your chest and, and you've been out there and, and you've – your blood, sweat, and tears, not just in coaching, but as a player, has been out on those fields and you know, at the Liberty Bowl. I mean, it, I think it means a little bit more. And you, know, and, and you can just sense, and they're just so excited to be back and, and to see the growth. And they're part of the reason that I'm staying here today is because you know, we're standing on the shoulders of the former players that sacrificed so much uh, to allow us to have the things we've had now and the success. And so it, it, not only former Tigers, but tremendous coaches. And, and, man, I think I couldn't be more excited about this staff. It's really a great group of guys. You guys have had the opportunity to spend some time with them just briefly. I cannot wait for you all to spend more time with them, to watch them coach on the field, because uh, I'll put our coaching staff versus anybody out in the country. From a roster standpoint, some of the new guys you've uh, brought in, specifically the transfers, how have, what, what have you seen out of, uh, out of some of them in the workouts? I was waiting, hoping, because you guys are going to ask practice one, who stood out today of the new guys. I'm like, can we at least get the practice four? Um, so, yes, who stood out in their underwear workouts and, and the weight room? Um, here's the deal. Let me first start. We've got so many returning players that have done a tremendous job this offseason. It's easy for a Seth Hennig and a Rock Taylor or Kobe Drake to rest on the loaders, Demir Blake, and see. Those guys are continue to push, more so than I've ever seen. And then you've got these newcomers, right? Like we have Sutton Smith we're really excited about in the running back room, right? Jay, Dr. Brandon Thomas. Mario Anderson's done some really great things. We're excited to see what he can do when we put the pads on and go play football. But he's done a nice job of working hard, buying in. Um, 
you know, as I said this morning on the radio, like most of our tight ends are back. Most of our wide receivers, with the exception of a couple, Jair Shorters look nice out there. Um, you know, the, the O-line, some pieces, some of the guys are a little bit dinged up, so we may not get to see this spring, but, you know, we'll certainly get to see in fall camp at full speed. And then, you know, then you look at defense. We've had some new bites to the defensive line that I'm quite excited about. You know, a guy like P.J. Lucas, uh, transfer from Ole Miss to Indiana, coming back closer to home. He's from Alabama, the state of Alabama, has done some great things. We're really excited about what he's been able to do. Um, and just the growth of so many other guys. We've had a lot of linebackers now that we're good. And then the, really when you look at what we've added the most of is safeties. We've had a lot of safeties, and, man, they look pretty running around. They look great running around. And, but guess what? Will they go make a play on the ball, right? Will they, will they go tackle? And so those are the things, you know. Um, I don't want to shortchange you, with, uh, Frank, with your answer, but reality, it's been quite pleasing. I can honestly sit here and say, like, there's not been a single guy that's come in, a newcomer, and be like, oh, that's a disappointment, right? And, and they're pushing. Guys learn. There are certain ways that, hey, we did previous school here. This is how I – and, look, we also have high school guys. We've got some guys, I think, that got prom in a couple weeks that are here working. So uh, it's been fun to watch them, but, man, like nothing. I'll be like a kid in the candy store next Tuesday morning saying, all right, here we go, let's go get out there for practice.